a woman from the United Kingdom named Julia Taylor lost her job as a nurse working for the NHS. And it was because she contracted coronavirus and it took her too long to get well. She had something called long COVID. I know that's still debated. I know that many healthcare providers and peers, non-healthcare providers, don't understand yet about long COVID. And I'm not sure they even really have to. I think they have to have an open mind. Um, the job of a nurse should be treated like the job of a doctor. Respectfully, nurses are saving lives too. And I want to mention all the working class that have contracted coronavirus. It wasn't their fault. They had no control over it. Especially if they were nurses or in the arena of the front line or healthcare or anywhere where they're going to be very, very, very highly exposed to uh, pathogens and viruses, no matter how much protection they uh, provide for themselves or are provided by their company or their employer. <sighs> Never worked in my life officially, but I remember as a mental health client before, long before COVID, it seemed like I caught every virus that was floating around in the air when I was in treatment because uh, that was pre-masks, that was pre-COVID. That was when many, many viruses and colds and germs were going around. I had to ride public transportation every day to go to day treatment, um, go to therapy, and go to my 12-step meetings. I had to uh, attend crowded groups and crowded rooms and crowded institutions and crowded uh, places. And I caught a cold, like, like, all the time. I was always sick, always, until I started wearing a mask. And um, that I'm not advertising the mask, but another patient... Uh, started wearing one and suggested that I do and I cut my number of colds in half and it goes to show that um, there are viruses floating around in the air so if cold viruses could float in the air pre-COVID I can only imagine what Julie Taylor went through and other countless other nurses healthcare uh, frontline workers and other working class that had to uh, you know unintentionally expose themselves to coronavirus and the worst part of it is Many of them have lost their jobs or been driven to quit their jobs because their employers, they're worried about the dollar in the hospital and institution. They're more, they seem to be more worried about, about money, about making money, and, than about um, the needs of their uh, employees, their nurses, and such. And before anyone thinks in their minds that I don't understand about things, that is one of the biggest excuses that was that was put upon me in my childhood. Um, when I kept asking about why not everybody got health care in America and in the world, and not everyone got fed when they were hungry, not everyone had jobs, their excuse was, you need to understand that it's more complicated than that. I don't think it is. I truly believe that, that if we find a way out of, out of stuff like this, if we find solutions, you know, anyone who is willing to even try and look for a solution, I believe, is not part of the problem. And Julie Taylor was not part of the problem. She tried to be part of the solution. She took care of people when they were sick, when they had COVID. She was uh, deployed to uh, be a nurse, be a frontline nurse, and um, she caught coronavirus, and she tried really hard to get well. She did everything I, th I think the doctors told her. She she tried to get help and get medical care. She even tried to get maybe she, I think she might have tried to get counseling. I'm not too clear on that. Maybe maybe she tried to get mental health, but um, she kept saying that she got gaslighted. And psychologized. And um, I often got driven out of the healthcare system. In fact, when I was in when I was in perimenopause, when I was in my 30s, you know, again before COVID. But my point is, I got gaslighted when I tried to get treatment for perimenopausal symptoms. 
And um, a female gynecologist practically laughed in my face. I was in the mental health system. I was in the psychiatric treatment program again. And I asked my psychiatrist, and he was sympathetic. He said, okay, I'll, uh, I'll make you an appointment with the gynecologist in the hospital. And because um, I, was, I was a partial patient then. And uh, he was cool. He, uh, he made the arrangements for me to see this gynecologist, maybe uh, get evaluated for hormonal therapy. And uh, she laughed right in my face and said, you don't need hormonal therapy. You just need a, an increase of your medications. And I was so hurt. You know, all I did was look at her and say, all right, thank you, you know. And um, I went back to my counselor, and they said, well, we'll, we'll work on increasing your meds. So we consulted with the psychiatrist, and um, the psychiatrist just said, I'm sorry, uh, she couldn't help you. He didn't increase my meds because he, he didn't believe I needed a, an increase in my meds. He disagreed with the doctor, but it was like the system couldn't help me have, have health care. And it's kind of analogous to what, what happened to Julie. She wasn't taken seriously. She was gaslighted. And I'm glad she didn't believe that she was just, you know, had mental problems. She believed that her condition was real. And I wish, uh, you know, it's bad enough that healthcare providers have to gaslight patients like that and uh, psychologize and psychiatric eyes, you know, or whatever. You, I don't know if that's a word, but you know what I'm saying. Um, she ended up, you know, losing her job because... A person, you know, or, or force or organization or something in a healthcare system let her go because she didn't get well fast enough. And she also mentioned that um, nurses were needed, needed in her country. And I think nurses are also needed here in America. You know, I wouldn't doubt that the same thing is going on in the United States. You know, in a in a predominantly obsessively capitalist uh, system, you're going to worry more about money, and you're gonna you're gonna drop the the workers, and the workers in turn are gonna wonder, okay, um, how do I put food on the table now? How do I get another uh, job? And she bounced back, but uh, I can imagine how she must have been feeling. I think it's completely wrong that um, she had to lose her job, and she mentioned something in that vein. She had to lose her job because of exposure to coronavirus. That didn't uh, that 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 failed to uh, bless her with uh, a quick recovery. It's just, she couldn't help it. I, too, had had a semblance of long COVID when I got COVID um, last Christmas. I had a cough that hung on so that I had to see my doctor. I had to see an urgent care doctor several times to clear up the cough. I had a very bad infection. I had a, I had a complication. I had bacterial infection because um, I had sinus congestion left over from the COVID infection. Uh, that was hanging on even though the virus was flushed out, even though the virus was destroyed uh, by my own immune system. Um, and I, I didn't get over the, the effects. I didn't get over the effects of the COVID until uh, January. And um, I still wasn't quite well. And um, I got sick again in February. Right after Valentine's Day, I got sick again with a bacterial infection that was co a complication of what was left over from the COVID. Just a cough and a sinus congestion that just kept hanging on and fatigue and um, headaches and things. And I wasn't functioning very well. And uh, I finally got over that in early March, but the cough still, cough still hung on into May off and on. And um, finally got treated with prednisone. And um, again, uh, the way the way I was treated was uh, 
the doctor said, well, we, we don't know if you've got it or not. It, these things just take time to go away sometimes. And I said, doctor, I shouldn't have had a cough hanging on for, uh, for months and months and months and months and months. And I wasn't feeling well. And this was affecting my functioning. I think if I had been working, I would have lost my, my job too. Oh. And because I remember, I remember, uh, I, I'm kind of a, ho a semblance of a homemaker of sorts. And when I'm sick, I can't, I can't get the dishes washed or the kitchen cleaned up or my own, uh, back room here cleaned up or my trundle bed even tidied because I was kind of lying on it for a really long time. And my, my room was just, I was letting my room go and I was letting my office go and my, and the kitchen and, um, it was affecting the quality of our lives here at home. And if I'd been working for someone else, they might have gotten frustrated with me. Unless they were really kind and had a heart, they, they could have kept me. But, you know, if I'd been a nanny or working for someone else, I might have lost my job too. Um, coronavirus is a harsh mistress. And um, a lot of jobs have been lost because of it. And the worst thing about it was the attitude. You know, um, I think, I think this should be treat. I think coronavirus should be treated as a, um, especially if it's related to uh, frontline or uh, job jobs. I think it should be treated like a job injury. You know, I think, I think, you know, if you're injured on the job or, or sick on the job, you get poisoned or you get, you know, pathogens or you get hurt. You should be compensated. You, you should be getting some kind of uh, disability benefits from your employer, you know, or from the government. You know, that's ridiculous that she just got let go. And I appreciate her resilience. She shows a lot of courage, and she's talking about it. And um, she's moving on, but it wasn't right. She had a job injury. And it wasn't uh, compensated. It wasn't uh, dealt with. You know, I, I wish I could fly. fly I wish I could uh, talk to someone at her hospital that she worked at and, and simply say, what have you done? Your employee had a job injury, a really bad one that affected her life as she knew it. Not to mention uh, her, her work, her work life. And all you did was, was just let her go. That's not right. Be safe, everyone. I wish the whole wide world a speedy recovery from COVID. I wish them, I wish the whole wide world a true cure. And better yet, I wish the whole wide world some understanding and psychological and spiritual and physical and mental evolution. We got to get off this uh, obsession with money and think about humanity. We can do a lot better. We can. We can do something about this. We must try.